All right, so type 1 diabetes, this accounts for about 10% of diabetes. It's a much smaller number. Um, the onset is usually before the age of 30. So most type 1 diabetics get diagnosed pretty early in life. This is an autoimmune destruction of pancreatic beta cells, and it requires a lifelong insulin replacement. Type 2 diabetes is really what you're probably more familiar with. This accounts for about 90% of diabetes. It's a heterogeneous etiology. This is related to a progressive insulin secretory defect um, on the background of insulin resistance. And these folks rarely develop ketoacidosis. If you see ketoacidosis, it's usually in a type 1 diabetic. So let's go through a case. This is a 48-year-old woman, and she comes in for a routine office exam. She's overweight. She has a history of type 2 diabetes in her family. Uh, she has no other medical problems. She denies any symptoms, so she's not having any polyuria, polydipsia, or weight change. Do you think she should be screened for diabetes? Yes. Good answer. So for type 1 diabetes, there really is no effective screening strategy. So even if there's a family history of type 1, type 1 doesn't necessarily run in families. Type 2 does. So we don't screen for type 1, but we do screen for type 2. The ACOG recommendation for screening is a fasting blood sugar every three to five years in a woman with a family history of adult onset diabetes, a history of gestational diabetes, or obesity. There's lots of different recommendations. So you'll see these are the, the American Diabetes Association. It's a little bit different. They recommend hemoglobin A1C in adults or fasting blood sugar of any age if they're overweight and they have more than one risk factor. So you know, you're always going to go with your ACOG recommendation. So what are these risk factors? Who should we be thinking, geez, we should screen these people? Uh, definitely if they're physically inactive. Family history is really important, particularly those gestational diabetics. So someone who had a, gest a history of gestational diabetes and they have a family, strong family history of type 2, these women need to get screened every year. Uh, members of high-risk ethnic groups, and those include almost every ethnic group other than Caucasians. Not that Caucasians have a high risk, but other ethnic groups higher. So African American, Hispanic, Pacific Islanders, Asian, all have a higher risk than Caucasian for type 2 diabetes. Uh, if they've had GDM or a big baby, over nine pounds. If they have other cardiac risk factors, so it's not that hypertension or hyperlipidemia causes or increases the risk of diabetes, it's that whenever you see one cardiac risk factor, you want to look for the others.